Hello everyone, this is Dr. Craig Zell. I am here with you today to introduce how to create a, a custom thermal insulation material included in a custom uh, opaque envelope construction assembly within IESV program. So let's start. To be able to do that, I have this uh, sample building, which is the Department of Energy's medium-sized reference office building. And as you see the geometry here, but today we are not going to be dealing with the geometry. Instead, we're going to look at the Apache SIM module. And then I'm going to visit this Apache Construction Database Manager, which contains all the project construction assemblies. As you see, these are all the already assigned thermal construction assemblies. I'm going to visit the external wall. And then I will scroll down a little bit. Again, you may have a similar project library or a much different project library than mine. Uh, I have a lot of uh, construction assemblies already defined because I already imported some template materials from Asia 90.1. And this includes PRM type construction assemblies. And again, I'm gonna focus one of these. This is, for example, the PRM Climate Zone 5 external wall, non-residential steel frame construction assembly with, uh, with certain R value of the construction material, the thermal insulation materials and the overall U value. And again, you don't need to pick up the exact same construction assembly, but this is my method. I'm going to build my custom construction based on this selected assembly. Okay, this will be much more easier because today I'm going to focus on the thermal insulation, not the other layers within the entire construction assembly. So here we have this wall and I'm going to right click and duplicate. And I have the duplicate of this wall. You see the data source is Asia 90.1, but when I duplicate it, the data source becomes the generic, which is editable, which is customizable in many different ways. In fact, you can click on it and then completely change it to a new construction assembly type. Okay, so that I created my new wall, but this is exactly the same of the source assembly. Let's have a look what's inside. When you come, stay on the name, ID, and just double click, and a new dialog box pops up, and you see the overall thermophysical properties of this wall. Has, has the name I have given, but has the exact same uh, layers contained within this construction assembly. Okay, it is a U value of 0.4813. Okay, let's keep this in mind. We're gonna look at it one more time when we create our new uh, thermal insulation layer and when we add it up and recalculate the U value. So how to do that? I'm thinking about which one to change. There's a cavity insulation, there's a continuous insulation. I will keep all the other layers unchanged. I'm gonna focus on this continuous insulation. I will select it and I choose project materials. Okay, in the project materials, this is the continuous insulation, but I don't want to change it right here. I would like to duplicate this insulation material again and change it. Maybe this existing insulation material may be used as some other part of the model. So I'm gonna choose this and select uh, add project material and scroll down and you see this insulation material duplicated for me and being located at the very end of the list. And let's give it a name. Uh, I will give it again my name, but there's a specific insulation material that I'm going to be creating. Uh, my vacuum insulation material. Okay. Now, right now, I have only changed the name. All the other fundamental thermophysical properties stays unchanged, conductivities, densities, specific heat, capacity. So how to find all this information? So for to be able to help you out, uh, I have done my homework and then um, 
I create it, I, I find out a specific uh, thermal insulation material. And right now I'm gonna pick it up. Okay, here is the material that I am interested at this point. Vacuum insulation panel uh, from Variotech. Why this insulation material? Because it's just attracted my attention with, with its very, very low thermal contact, DVT. Look at it, 0 0.007 watts per meter Kelvin. So, but not just the conductivity, I need the density, I need the specific heat. So I drive it from the manufacturer's data uh, through my research and I just find out this information. If not in the uh, SI system, I converted them to the SI system because currently I am using the SI system as the units of measurement. So these are the three fundamental information that's to be able to create your custom thermal insulation material. But before that, I will have a target. So you now I need to know the thickness. Right now in the fundamental properties, you don't see any thickness, but you need a thickness. But how to find the thickness? As you may remember from the previous videos, I have this thermal insulation thickness calculator tool uh, with an Excel. That's why my information is already in the Excel. What I'm going to provide is the thermal conductivity of the specific uh, vacuum insulation material and the target R value uh, in the AIP system and just the calculator gives out to for me the required thickness. I'm going to use this thickness. I will need that thickness while creating my thermal insulation layer. Okay, so let's assume. Uh, let's go back and have a look at it. It was, uh, I don't want to get this too complex, but it was R3.8, okay, R3.8. So how can we improve it? Let's make it R20, just thermal insulation layer. R20, uh, again, not the entire assembly R value, just the thermal insulation R value would be R20. That's my target. So if I will, I'm using this vacuum insulation panel, I will need 0 0.025 meters or 2.5 centimeters of thickness. But before thickness, I, will, I have to get this information and just move it to my, um, to my ISV input panel. So, okay, let's do this. I have my vacuum insulation. I need thermal conductivity, which is very, very low, 0 0.007. I know the density is about 256 and the specific heat is about uh, 900. The rest I'm not touching because I'm not interested in the other type of simulation. I'm doing thermal, fundamental thermal simulation. So while, you know, let's look at it. I have the conductivity, density, specific heat. Let's put this aside and I put the same conductivity, density and specific heat. Okay, so I just take this material and I can copy this material, close it. I will save the changes, of course. And I came here, I click on the existing material and insert. Now, this method inserts the, the new material right next to the existing material. It can be insulation material or another type of material. Now, right now I have mine, but I'm gonna delete the old one. Delete later. So, minus in the mix, okay? Am I done? here not yet because you know i have the fundamental properties but the thickness remember we need to provide the thickness to be able to create the entire layer so let's go back to our uh, previous study the thickness is about 0 0.025 meters for our 20 target remember we are targeting something here so again, I'm gonna change the thickness. Oh, it's given as millimeters, so that's fine. Then the millimeters is about uh, 25. Okay, 25, 25 millimeters, 2.5 centimeters. Not that much. I don't need that much of uh, that thickness of insulation to be able to reach the R20. But again, R20 is not the total R value of your construction assembly, just, just the insulation layer. Or, you know, I can, I can write like this. Let's go back to the project materials 
And since I've given the thickness, I can call it R20. And close it, save it, close it. Okay, updated, R20. So now it's been included. I have the new terminal installation layer, a brand new created, and I have the new construction assembly. I say, okay, so, and I say, okay, it should be in the mix. Immerse new wall and with the new new uh, U-value, let's try to find out what was the U-value before. It was about 48.48 watts per meter square Kelvin and my new assembly is 0.17 watts per meter square Kelvin. That is a lot of change a lot of improvement because I'm reducing the U-value. Obviously, this will be a better wall in terms of thermal resistance, or I can call it my new high-performance external wall. And then in the next steps, you can assign this newly created construction to your geometry. Again, I would like to emphasize, time to time I, I emphasized already, just creating an assembly would not be the end of the game. You need to assign it to the services, to the buildings, to the zones in your building energy model. I say, okay, I'm going to say my changes. Okay, that's about it. Thank you for listening and thank you for your attention. See you next time.